Hey everybody, so in this lecture we're going to talk about levers and then we're going to talk about the concept of torque. So we understand the basic premise of a seesaw or a lever, right? These are two different types of seesaws, two different types of levers. One of them is hanging from a rope and one of them is, uh, has got what we call fulcrum here underneath, but they're both, you know, they both function essentially the same way. And the way that it works, of course, we know that if you put two things of uh, equal weight on uh, opposite sides, then the seesaw, the lever will balance, right? And if the lever balances, then what that means is that we've got an equal amount of torque on both sides, right? So torque in this case, so torque is represented by a lowercase tau, which kind of looks like that. So torque is equal, right? So we could say T1 is equal to T2. And of course this can happen if we've got two masses that are the same uh, distance from the center, but it can also happen, for example, if we've got a heavier mass that's closer to the middle, right? And you might've seen this if, you, if you've if you ever used a seesaw, right? If you put a heavy person, but they're closer to the middle, then they might still balance out a lighter person. The equation that we can use for torque is that torque is equal to the force that's applied times the distance from the center. Sometimes this variable rather than being D is actually R, R representing the radius. Uh, that is to say the distance from the center of a circle, which uh, is the radius, right? So you can either think of it as R or D, it doesn't really matter. So this gives you the torque. And so let's do an example. Let's say that we've got a lever. And as I said before, it doesn't really matter what the lever is. And uh, typically for the purposes of the MCAT, we pretend that the, the bar itself doesn't have weight, doesn't have any mass. Now that's not, a, you know, that's not actually a good assumption in real life, uh, but thankfully this isn't real life, so we don't have to worry about that. And so let's say we've got two objects. We've got um, object number one is over here. And we'll say that it is 50 kilograms. And uh, we'll say that this distance is 10 meters. Now, object number two is an unknown weight, unknown mass. And it is 7 meters away. So, Assuming that our lever is balanced here, uh, what would be the weight, what would be the mass of this thing? So how do we go about figuring this out? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna do torque one, the torque on this side is equal to the torque on this side. Uh, because again, if the torque were unequal, then the lever would rotate and it would move. And we said that it's balanced, it's, uh, it's not rotating, it's not moving, so that means that they are equal, right? So T1 is equal to T2. So we could say this is T1 is equal to T2. And again, they're equal. So we can use these two equations and then set them equal to each other. So we can say that F1 times R1 is equal to F2 times R2. Now let's try and fill in the variables that we uh, that we already know. So R1, of course, is seven meters, right? This is side one, and R is just the distance from uh, the middle. So seven meters times F1, which we don't know, and that's going to be equal to F2. What exactly is the force that's being applied here? By this, uh, by this 50 kilogram thing? Well, the force in this case is equal to the mass of the object times uh, the acceleration of gravity, right? So F equals MA. So in this case, the mass of the object, acceleration is gravity, so we can say actually MG. Uh, and MG, of course, is, or G is 10. So you can kind of do that math in your head, I think, um, right? You take that 50 kilograms times uh, G, which is 10, and that equals 500, and that's 500 newtons. So the force, being applied, being exerted by this object is 500 newtons. So 500 newtons times R2, and R2 is 10. Now we want to solve for F1. I'm just going to use white because it's simpler. 5,000 on this side 
is equal to seven meters times F1, 5,000 over seven is equal to F1. Unfortunately, I picked numbers where the math doesn't work out very well. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to use a calculator. Of course, on the MCAT, typically they would, uh, they would give you numbers that work out a little better. And I should note also that in practice problems, the in, in our practice problems, the, the math works out better. So I deliberately, I thought about it a little bit more than I did here. Okay, so F1 is equal to 714. Now, what is F1? Of course, F1 is going to be equal to, uh, here, F equals the mass times 10, times G, right? So 714 equals m times 10, 71 is equal to, or 71.4 actually, is equal to m. And so in this case, this mass was 71, why, or 71.4. And just intuitively, does that make sense? Uh, so it's always good to check your work intuitively, make sure it makes sense, and it does make sense, right? So this mass is closer to the center, so we would expect it to um, to have to be higher. And so it is higher, it's uh, 71, whereas this one is 50, and so that makes sense. And uh, so zooming out, so we talked here about torque, we talked about how for something to not rotate, it means the torque on one side has to be equal to the torque on the other, right? And that torque uh, causes things to rotate. Right? Torque is a special type of force that causes something to rotate. And the equation for force is for torque is this. By the way, torque is sometimes also referred to as the moment. So you might hear the term moment. Uh, and moment just refers to torque. And those are basically analogous terms. And in, in some contexts, they call it a moment. But it's the same thing. So that's all we need to know for torque and levers for the MCAT. And I think practice problems are really going to help you to uh, figure this out and really get better at doing this. So... That's all we need to know.